So we've seen how this dome was formed. We've seen that at some point in the past, those layers followed the contour of the dome. There's a further challenge. What's happened to that dome? The top has been cut off. And as I will now show you, and as you've seen momentarily in the footage so far, it's like the top has been cut off with a knife. That flat surface can be seen from high points for hundreds of kilometers around Johannesburg, and although I've not personally witnessed it, I'm told it extends all the way to Zimbabwe, a distance of more than a thousand kilometers. I've done some investigation around the immediate vicinity of Johannesburg, the Witwatersrand, the Michalisberg, and find that there are spot heights all over the place of 1,700 meters to 1,800 meters at a level of uniformity that is mind-boggling from an engineering point of view if this level plane formed over millions of years by things settling and moving and, and what have you. If you've ever tried to cast a horizontal concrete slab, hang a door vertical and plumb, ice the top of a cake flat, or produce anything else of uniformity and level, you will know how mechanically difficult it is to do that. Imagine how difficult it is to have a plane which extends for hundreds of kilometers, 2,000 meters up in the air, or above sea level. I'm going to show you the evidence which suggests that that could only be done by a massive tsunami, a massive tidal wave, extending across the entire planet, scything around and around and around, chopping off layer after layer to produce a level surface that is almost exactly parallel with the sea surface. This surface is called the African erosion surface. It's a massive flat plain. It's well documented, as we can see on the internet and Google. Uh, we see a publication of the Geological Society of America on the African erosion surface. 1,980,000 1, exact matches in Google. Considerable technical literature. And it's vital to understanding the full impact of this presentation. How did it happen? Here we see from a, a atlas, the mid-brown area all over southern Africa represents this African erosion surface, this flat plain. Looking north from Northcliffe, we find that the horizon is remarkably uniform and level. There are no mountains that stand out. We find these same panorama characteristics all over the Witwatersrand. And so we see there the, the range of the view roughly from Northcliffe. Looking south from Northcliffe, we see the same basic uh, attributes, although a little bit masked by the presence of the city of Johannesburg. Further north from the Grand Central Airport control tower, a 360 degree view, we notice the same uniform horizon with slight curvature representing the curvature of the earth there in the panorama of photographs. East of Costa in the northwest province we find exactly the same. Travelling over to Krugersdorp we find the same with the exception of the hill towards the left of the picture but the reality is as you will see from the right of the picture this photograph was not taken at the absolute highest point and if it were that peak would also be level with the surrounding peaks. And so it doesn't matter where you travel around 
the Vidvatasrant, and in fact, many kilometers from the Vidvatasrant, you find the same phenomenon of uniform panoramas. Returning to Northcliffe on the geological survey, one in 50,000 map, we find that the spot height on Northcliffe is 1,807 meters above sea level, and we notice that around that there are a significant number of of heights in the range 1,700 to 1,800 meters. Drilling in, we find that several kilometers away is another high point, only 2.3 percent lower than Northcliffe. Moving to the east, around observatory, we find a spot height of 1,809 meters. Two meters different from Northcliffe, but more than 10 kilometers away. From an engineering point of view, that is a remarkable feat. It would be extremely difficult in human terms to construct something with that level of precision over that distance. Notice again a number of heights between 1,700 and 1,800 meters. Drilling in, we find a number of points very close in height to Northcliffe. Going north to Heckpoort, we find the Neutgedacht Ridge, 1,852 meters, 45 meters higher than Northcliffe, but 50 kilometers away. A remarkable challenge in a creating uniformity, and we find in the immediate vicinity a number of spot heights close to one another. Traveling to Grand Central, we find a little bit lower, around Benoni, the Joburg Airport, also a little bit lower, going west to Rontfontein, uh, also fairly close. And then going to Sekobos Rant, we find uh, a 5% variation, just under 100 meters higher at the high point. Sekobos Rant is the watershed of the entire central Vidvatasrant Gauteng area. And so we find, over a distance of about 100 kilometers, a variation of the order of 100 meters. A remarkable feat of engineering if this was to be done uh, in human terms. So we find small high point variation in the Johannesburg area. We find limited high point variation over Gauteng. We find this level surface visible from all high points in the area, confirming the African erosion surface. It's a feat of engineering and very difficult to do in practice, and it's not possible to happen randomly over millions of years. It requires an overall grading mechanism to produce such a widespread level surface. If we consider the art of plane and level, we live in a man-made world where we take vertical and horizontal plumb for granted. And yet it requires feats of engineering and human precision to produce absolutely level slabs. It even requires some skill to produce a level top to a wedding cake. It requires special tools to make precise furniture. And in the background, in ways that many people are unaware of, precise machines are used to produce precisely level surfaces, as in the case of this road grader where the long wheel span provides the mechanics to produce a uniform and level surface. We've seen already that massive wave action can move huge amounts of material, but you'll notice from the photographs that the displacement is all over the place, a function of the individual wave forces. But what if we had uniform waves? Consider the possibility, how do we get this uniform surface? Consider the possibility of a massive tidal wave ripping around the planet, chopping off layer after layer and producing this uniform surface. As an engineer, I can see no other explanation. It is the only way that we can explain this uniformity over thousands of kilometers. It's only massive water action that has the capacity to cut down 
this level of material and to cut the top off the halfway house granite dome and the sedimentary layers up thrust by the dome including the extremely hard rock that we've seen. Please reflect on your own practical life experience and knowledge. What else can explain the topographic forms, the landforms that we see around us? Please don't abdicate your intellect. Check this theory out for yourself as you drive around and look at travel books. So to sum up, we have a massive flat plain, level with the sea level, but we cannot see the sea. Nearly 2,000 meters above sea level. From a technical point of view, it seems impossible. And I suggest for your consideration that it cannot possibly have occurred slowly over millions of years. It's too uniform. What caused it? There is no reasonable explanation apart from massive global wave and water action. How could that occur? Where's the water gone? And for that matter, where did it come from? So some conclusions thus far. We live in an unstable universe with runaway stars, massive planetary impacts, massive ice blocks in space. We have sedimentary deposits over thousands of kilometers and to depths in excess of 10,000 meters. These can only have been eroded and deposited by massive hydraulic action consistent with a global flood. We have massive igneous intrusions consistent with a thin crust and massive crustal disruption due to an external force. We have massive erosion of upthrust material to give a level plane over thousands of kilometers which can only be explained by massive hydraulic action consistent with a global sea and massive tidal waves. Music